OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, good, my name is Jerry. I'm, I'm the instructional technologist at uh, Highlands Community Charter and Technical Schools in Sacramento, California. Um, really happy to uh, see all of you here. Um, just a quick, real quick background on me. I'm, I uh, originally started out as a high school multiple subjects teacher um, here at Highlands and uh, developed some CTE courses. Uh, taught digital literacy, some um, digital media uh, course pathway stuff, and uh, moved into uh, sort of special projects dealing with digital literacy and staff training, uh, and eventually um, moved into this role that I have now. And in this role, uh, I was fortunate to be able to develop a digital navigator program at our agency. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. And, um, and there's kind of two components just to frame this out. There's the digital navigator position itself and what that means and what they do and how that came about. So I'll go into the history of that um, and sort of a little bit about the framework, but not, not so much. The focus of this is actually um, the uh, course and a CT pathway that we built out alongside the position um, for our students. And so that's where Maria is going to come in. So um, I'll cover kind of the background and history, and then Maria will go into the, uh, uh, the actual course and how that works. And so, um, yeah, so I'll let Maria introduce herself. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. As uh, Jerry uh, in, it, uh, mentioned to us, we have um, two different topics, but they are very interrelated, Digital Navigator and then the CTE course uh, to supplement that role here at Highlands. And that's what I will be talking about. I started off my journey at Highlands in 2019. I was a CASAS proctor, and then I was able to move into the Digital Navigator position for about a year. And that really heavily, all of the things that we learned uh, heavily influenced how the course was built out for our students. And that's what I'll be talking to you guys about today. Looking forward to it. Great, so um, yeah, so let's just kind of jump right in here. Um, and if anyone has any questions along the way, please uh, feel free to put them in the chat or if you wanna raise your hand and we can get to you, I don't mind. Uh, I think we have kind of a smaller group and, uh, you know, more, I think more interaction is better than no interaction. So uh, feel free to kind of jump in um, and uh, ask questions as we go. Okay. So uh, you guys are seeing a broken window. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure this thing is all laid out. I don't, I hardly use PowerPoint and it's so, it's so bulky and, you know, anyways, that's another session. Uh, <laughs> So the, the, I know this is kind of played out at this point, but really I wanna talk about the impact of COVID-19 and the, the, the impact that it had on digital learning can't be understated. We all remember, you know, Friday the 13th, right? When we made that transition. And in fact, many agencies and school districts and other stakeholders discovered very early on that access to technology and low di digital literacy posed significant challenges to their learners, and in some cases, uh, to their teachers and other staff as well. However, I've, I've heard it said that crisis breeds innovation. And in fact, we saw that all throughout the pandemic, right? Um, we heard these stories, beer makers and distilleries shifted their production to hand sanitizers, for instance, right? Uh, Another case uh, in Italy, a startup engineering company repurposed their 3D printer uh, arsenal to create valves that were used in ventilators. And so at Highlands, we also saw an opportunity to innovate. And so 
in this presentation, what you're gonna, I, I kind of spoke about it earlier, but you'll learn what a digital navigator is and how a community digital navigator CTE program might help your agency's efforts to elevate digital literacy, uh, reach instructional technology objecti objectives, if you have them, um, and uh, provide technical support for every student through student empowerment. This is student to student at this point, okay? Uh, which I think is really powerful and important. So with more and more of our schools that are approaching successful one-to-one -one digital device implementation goals, um, the focus started to shift um, from lack of access, right? So we talk about the digital divide all the time, right? And you know, historically, you we hear about the three-legged stool of digital, uh, the digital divide, a lack of access, lack of um, uh, internet, or so lack, lack of access to a device, lack of access to the internet, and then lack of access to training, right? So I think what happened here is that we shifted from the lack of access to devices and to an ex a lesser extent to internet because so many agencies were going one-to-one. -one. We were providing internet access or there was more widespread awareness of people needing internet access. We saw those buses going out to places, lots of people getting free internet. There was federal initiatives. But what we saw was really unveiling, hey, there's there's really still a lot of lack of skills out there. And uh, an early poll during that time, 2020, um, showed that student engagement was down. And I don't think that's really surprising. Um, and that troubleshooting technology problems went up. Also not surprising, but the impact is huge. Um, a staggering 87%, now all these uh, references are in the slides, so I can give you guys that later, so that'll be posted. So um, just so if you wanna check all this kind of stuff out, a staggering 87% of teachers that were polled reported that they were spending more time troubleshooting problems with technology than they did before schools closed. That is an incredible number, right? And it's very likely that the technology challenges directly contributed to the decline in student engagement. Um, maybe just like a show of hands on here, uh, or you know, raise your hand or a reaction. How many folks were teaching during this time when we shifted to remote learning? A couple people, yeah, I see Lars and Elizabeth. Yeah, I, would you say that you saw a decline in engagement? Would that be a true statement for, for you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I think we experienced it all across the board. Um, I'm in, I see there's a chat, but I can't read them. I'm in the, I'm in the present mode. So if, Maria, if you wanna chime in anytime, if there's something in the chat, that'd be great. A lot of folks say yes, definitely. They yeah, agree. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. No, I, I like the feedback. Um, <clears throat> so the shift to digital learning that was caused by the COVID-19 pandemic placed many, and in our case, and it may be the same as, you, as your case, at-risk, non-traditional adult learners in unfamiliar territory, okay? Um, and so what we did at Highlands, we wanted to take action to directly address those issues. Uh, our view is that by removing the technology-based barriers that our students face, especially our lower liter literacy learners, right? Do we have EL teachers here or anyone involved with EL students? Yeah. We get focused, I think, a lot of times on making sure that we're, we are maybe being immersive or trying to deliver content in, in English so that they're learning English along with the content, that it might be counterintuitive, but I think that that is a challenging approach in this particular circumstance. I, I believe that they're better equipped if we take away that language barrier and engage them in their first language if possible, so that we can remove that, that 
digital literacy barrier, right? And we're speaking lang first language to them, helping them remove the technical barriers so that in the long run, they're better equipped to engage online and receive high quality learning opportunities every day from the subject matter expert teachers. Does that make sense? We don't need to uh, die on the hill of, of teaching English alongside digital literacy. Let's take out the, the language part and give them the digital literacy first so they can engage online and be a, a digital learner. So around April of 2020, okay? This was right after the pandemic started, a, kind of the call went out. And so uh, there was an email that went out from NDIA. Is anyone familiar with NDIA, National Digital Inclusion Alliance? Okay, this is kind of a national, yeah, this is a uh, coalition, so to speak, of, of a lot of agencies and nonprofits and so forth all around the country um, that, that sort of lobby for digital inclusion initiatives. Uh, really supportive of, you know, maybe the, uh, if you've heard of the emergency broadband benefit, EBB, that was huge, now ACP, stuff like that, uh, rural broadband initiatives. Uh, and, and so this idea came up of a, a digital, actually what's interesting, they first called this idea a digital caseworker and everyone was like, eh, doesn't sound too great. Um, there was a working group that got put together by NDAA in early 2020, I was part of it. And we started working up this um, framework for a position which we eventually called Digital Navigator. And it was designed to help connect adult learners to technology and training. And the aim of it is to free up time and resources for educators. Remember, 87% were reporting that they were they were troubleshooting during their lesson time, right? So we're losing, that's, I mean, if you wanna talk about probably something that was not tracked, adult learner learn, learning loss, you know, cause in our field, they don't really, you know, we don't have a ton of data. We don't have a ton of academic research, right? But the learning loss didn't just affect K-12 students, right? Um, if we're If we're troubleshooting 87%, of the time, you know, uh, we want to free up that time. And so if we can create a position that would help free up that time, then we can use that time to continue to facilitate learning. Um, and I don't know if anyone has seen, uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Rosen has joined us in this um, symposium this, this year, but uh, he wrote a, an article about digital navigation services um, not too long ago. And he summarized it as uh, saying digital navigators focus on helping students get the digital skills they need to use the program or school's online learning platform. This may be its course management system or learning management system or a teacher created class website that includes assignments and links to text, audio and video based learning resources. Right here, uh, you can see two of our uh, first digital navigators that were hired uh, on the left is Majid and on the right is Natalia. Uh, Majid speaks Farsi, Natalia speaks Russian and Romanian. Uh, Russian and Farsi are two of our top three languages spoken at Highlands. So this is what we did to, you know, this is part of that strategy to remove the language barrier so that we can get digital training to our students directly. In addition to the goals that I mentioned before, the digital navigators work at Highland specifically as a key part of, of our efforts to achieve and maintain our one-to-one -one digital device environment, elevate digital literacy school-wide, reach instructional technology and objectives of which I'm in charge of. So, you know, this was my team that we built and um, they've done a fantastic job in helping me achieve our school-wide goals. And then, also to provide equitable internet access and support for every student. So, you know, not only do we provide access to devices and internet access directly through the school, through 
hotspots and now we have uh, now we have spark phones that we're distributing to students which have a hotspot unlimited hotspot built in but if they also need supplemental or they have they want something hardwired at home we can also help them navigate those resources to you know access the ebb or the acp now access uh, affordable internet options, maybe through Comcast or at t or whatever. So we can help them with that too. Upskilling our students through this project is going to prepare them for emerging job opportunities in the public and private sectors and position them to help other adult learners at schools and other community-based organizations elevate digital literacy and provide access to technology and support. The long-term impact, and I think this is really, really, really huge. The long-term impact on adult learners may include entry or re-entry into the workforce, career advancement, and my favorite, generational change. So shortly following the creation of the staff position, which was, um, October, I think we got it uh, written and approved in September. I started hiring in October and we started October 2020. Um, we hired six digital navigators uh, and those navigators spoke uh, Russian, Romanian, Ukrainian, Farsi, and Spanish. And Maria was one of those original six. Gary? You yes. have a, a question in the chat oh. from Lars. Okay. Are digital navigators considered tutors or do they need to have a teaching credential? That's a great question. They are um, they are classified staff at our school. Uh, they do not require a teaching credential. Um, what we really what I mean, what I was focused on when I was hiring was customer service skills, language skills, and digital skills. And so, if if those uh, folks, you know, I knew that they could provide good customer service. They had proficiency in the uh, platforms that were we were using, namely Google Workspace. Uh, if they knew how to operate a Chromebook. Um, that kind of thing. I mean, really, it's not super, super, you know, this is not super technical as like you would think of as IT or something. Um, this is about building trusted relationships with students and helping them with their digital challenges and getting them connected to their learning. Uh, so that's a fantastic question. And actually, um, I think the pathway could lead that direction and as it did for Maria because Maria transitioned out of, and she'll talk about this, I think a little bit, from being a digital navigator into becoming a credentialed teacher who is now teaching our CT, the CTE program to become a community digital navigator. So not only did we start, did we create this job of the digital navigator, it actually opened up a new CTE pathway where we hired a teacher. So the it's kind of a ripple effect actually, which was really fantastic. And the students really love the program. Um, I don't want to steal Maria's thunder, but I don't. I hope that answers your question, Lars. Great. Is there anything else there? Okay. Yeah. So so after we created the staff position, October in November of that year, we started the uh, CTE program uh, designed for our high school and our upper level uh, English language development students. So we were looking at students who were level four or above and had higher than, basically higher than minimum digital literacy skills. This is not a course where you are gaining digital literacy. This is a, you have to have that foundation to begin with, um, and we're building on a digital literacy foundation. They're gonna be uh, prepared to become community digital navigators. And the demand's actually growing in, uh, in our region and actually across the country, but um, in, the, in the capital region of California, 
Uh, many CBOs are looking to create the position and hire immediately. Uh, I've been in some meetings. I'm not sure if anyone's anyone here is from Sac the Sacramento region. You might be familiar with Valley Vision. They're kind of a regional think tank um, that's really focused on uh, workforce development and things like that. And they're sort of putting this coalition together to uh, create this digital navigator framework for the region and have CBOs create and hire the, for those positions. So I'm, I'm optimistic that there's going to be some more pipelines opening up that we would be training these folks and they would be able to be placed almost immediately into some of those CBO positions. Um, and so agencies that offer CTE, and this is what I wanna kind of hammer home for, for all of you, that if there's the takeaway is that if you offer CTE at your agency, you might want to consider specialized training for this emerging market. I think it's going to be um, something that's going to pop up more and more out in the community, these types of positions. Um, and it's not just limited, I, I will say, and I don't want to take away anything from Maria, I will say it's not just limited to education. Uh, we have seen, maybe you're familiar with this, They've you, we have seen these type of navigators in like the health field, right? So you might, you might get assistance with telehealth from a health navigator. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anyone, but you know, that, that sort of thing, you know, we're, our adult learners are the same folks that are having trouble accessing telehealth or accessing their, their web, their, you know, health insurance portal or something like that. And they've started to create these types of uh, positions for those segments too. So this is really transferable, these types of skills. All right, so I think I went through a lot there and uh, <laughs> any questions for me, I'm gonna hand it off to, to uh, Maria next, but if there's any questions for me, feel free to put them in the chat or raise your hand. Take it away, Maria. All right, thank you, Derry. Um, thank you, everyone, again. And so I'm going to be talking about what the actual CTE course uh, looks like that we offer to prepare our students for that digital navigator role. So through a combination of coursework based on Google's Applied Digital Skills curriculum and an internship, students get to gain knowledge and skills which can help them re-enter today's competitive workforce. Uh, the course built on students' existing basic digital literacy, literacy skills, just as uh, Derry explained to us, it's not necessarily um, a beginner or super introductory course. It introduces them to real world hands-on applications of digital skills in a workplace setting. So through authentic learning opportunities, students learn how uh, the, the technology that we're using fits into everyday life. Uh, it's also an exploration into digital tools and how those can make their academic career and personal lives easier and that is a major focus of the course. So the photo that we're looking at here, um, these students enter the course already having basic computer skills and a what we consider a level four plus English based on our own leveling system. So to be able to figure out where these students are at, we've been utilizing the North Star Digital Literacy Computer Basic Skills Assessment and Module to assess where their skills are at when they're coming to us um, into the course for the first time. Thank you. Uh, the course also helps our students uh, apply those digital skills with confidence, uh, help others with technology, help further their education. And like Jerry was explaining to us, consider careers where they can actually put their skills or their new skills to work. Maria, can you tell us a little bit just who's in this picture and what are, what are we looking at? 
Uh, yeah, so these uh, is part of one of our first group of students that joined the class and all of these students, um, as we continue to use the North Star digital literacy um, assessments, all of these certificates that the students are holding um, are one of the uh, modules that they have successfully completed. So we have a huge variety of students. So we have a mixture of our higher ELD students, some of our uh, high school program students, and all of these students, um, they all speak, their first language is all entirely uh, different. And so it's really neat to see all of these students uh, come together, learn about each other, and learn new technical skills from each other as well. <clears throat> so once our students have completed the course, they also have the opportunity to work directly with their classmates in other classes as part of an extended internship as a community digital navigator intern under the supervision of a Highlands digital navigator. And this is 40 hours. So we allow our students to come in and work with our digital navigators, work with our staff, work with our students to be able to practice those skills for 40 unpaid hours. Yeah, and I'll jump in real quick here. Uh, the picture on the right, um, actually this, when we first started the um, course, um, we were working uh, under a, um, a CARES Act <clears throat> grant to get it kind of kicked off at the time. And so this through the city of Sacramento, we were, you know, we got allotted uh, some funding to help get us started. And so uh, we were able to offer some stipends to these students who completed the academic portion of the um, program. And so what they're holding there, these are two of the students that completed um, by the deadline, they're holding all of their uh, applied digital skills uh, certificates. And uh, so that we were really proud of them. They finished those out um, and then um, they were able to move on into the internship portion. And on the left there, you'll see one of our students sing on the right of that picture on the left, uh, helping a fellow student uh, in the digital learning lab with the, one of our new uh, phones and uh, as part of his internship hours. So to answer the next question in the chat, do we have a fee for the program? No, uh, we don't um, have any fees in terms of our students enrolling in our school, as long as they're enrolled as a student with us um, and they have achieved a certain level of English, um, they're more than welcome to join our courses. Great question, thank you. And so we also wanted to share with you all uh, that here we have a few student testimonials about uh, the CTE course so far. All the students that volunteered here have either completed the course or are in the internship phase. Uh, so let's take a look. I am Harjit. I am from India. I learned many new skills regarding technology. This class enhanced my confidence. First and foremost, I like this class. The behavior of the teachers is magnificent and are aspiring. I have constructive, productive, and breathtaking learning environment of the class. Hello, my name is Slavik. I just moved to the USA. In these lessons, I learned a lot about how to work with different Google programs. What I especially like is that in the lessons of Maria, she is an excellent teacher. The material is very accessible and understandable, even if you don't know very good English. Here you are always welcome and everybody ready to help with any questions not only in the digital skills but also is in any areas of your life so 
I recommend it to go and study of this course. Hi everyone, I'm Sen. I'm taking the digital skill program. This is a very good program. You can learn a lot of digital skill in the class. In fact, I got it. So everyone, if you want to learn more about it, just come. Hi guys, my name is Svetlana and I am from Ukraine. About two months ago, my husband and I started attending digital navigation class at Highlands and we still like it. We're still in the process of learning new things about uh, Google Sites, about uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, uh, Google Drive, Google Slides, and maybe I forgot something, but anyways, this is a cool program which is self-paced, so you can uh, do um, each part when you have time for it. Nobody, um, nobody says, okay, you have to do this uh, like today, tonight, so don't worry, you have enough time enough time to uh, to finish all tasks and I really love our beautiful teacher Maria she's very nice and friendly she helps a lot she explains everything and I would highly recommend this class for everyone who is interested in learning uh, more about uh, internet products about uh, um, different uh, modern technologies and as I came here to improve my uh, YouTube channel, my Facebook page, I found uh, a lot of new information for myself and I also think uh, this uh, program will be helpful uh, for my future uh, career in US while I'm still in the process of learning. So don't be afraid of this uh, class. Uh, come and join us, uh, continue learning, continue educating yourself, and remember, it's never too late. So those were a few testimonials from our students, uh, but we do have a question in the chat. Uh, if you can help me answer this question, Jerry. It asks, were there any human resources uh, requirements to allow students to intern at our agency? That's a good question. Um, no, uh, not that I'm aware of because it was not a paid position. Um, and so it's just part of kind of on the, it, it's, it's sort of like work work hours or work experience hours that you might get uh, as far as credit earning. So they were earning credit for it towards high school diploma. Uh, so it was just part of the class. It was, it was not, uh, I don't think there was any HR issues at all. There would be if we were trying to pay them for it, uh, for those hours. But really what we're trying to do is just get them uh, experience during their class time and then positioning them to get, hopefully, get placed into a job right afterwards. Um, and actually one of those jobs is possibly working with our team at Highlands. So that's one of the pathways that they, they might be able to take um, once they complete the program. So I hope that helps. Awesome, thank you. And so in terms of what it is do we teach uh, our students? Uh, during the course. So we utilize um, the Applied Digital Skills online learning platform. And so most particularly, we use the Google Workspace training set of lessons. So this set consists of Google Drive, Gmail, Docs, slides, sheets, and we've added additional lessons that we found to be applicable to the role of a digital navigator, uh, such as design a website to promote a project, send professional emails, manage project communication, make a promotional flyer, schedule project tasks in Google Sheets, and a few others which are all still found on the Applied Digital Skills online learning platform. Uh, and I see a question in the chat. There was a mention of a stipend. Was that for students working as 
navigators. Uh, no, that was a special situation uh, that was basically uh, using, it was kind of re-engagement funds for through the CARES Act. So we were trying to re-engage students, uh, bringing them back into school and getting them into programs uh, that we were able to provide a stipend through that. It had nothing to do with the internship part, if that's Correct. the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Will you go to the next slide? Thank you. So in addition to applied digital skills, um, we also use the North Star Digital Literacy uh, Program to teach our students the, basic, the basics of computers, using email, and understanding the internet. The digital navigator role at Highlands has proven that this is essential knowledge and that these are essential skills needed to perform the role as it was designed, which is to help others facing these very same issues in our schools or communities and to be able to do so in a language other than English, which would be uh, their first language. So we also take the time to explore digital tools uh, such as Screencastify and QR code technology and generators. I believe that these tools are great introductory tools to 21st century digital skills. They are easy to use and students get to use these tools for themselves outside of the classroom. I have had many uh, examples after teaching Screencastify or how to teach how to generate your own special QR code. Um, I've had students come to me afterwards and say, hey, I actually, uh, like our student Svetlana, she has her own YouTube channel. Uh, she said, hey, I generated a, a QR code for my YouTube channel that I post on my Facebook page that she posts on her social media, for example. So these are really good tools that students uh, get to use, get to explore, get to experiment with outside of the classroom while practicing those uh, 21st century digital skills. One of the benefits of using online learning platforms like Applied Digital Skills and North Star Digital Literacy is that upon the completion of the lessons or of the assessments, uh, students get to leave with certificates uh, to showcase their accomplishments and their knowledge. As you can see in these photos, the photo on the left is North Star, the photo on the right is Applied Digital Skills. So these are certificates that our students can add to their resumes or digital portfolios for prospective employers or other educational institutions to see. And last but not least, our students are invited to a 40 hour internship with our current digital navigators here at Highlands. And during this 40 hour internship, our students gain hands on experience with onboarding new students to their school loaned device. Onboarding is basically an introduction that's typically given in the new student's first language. It's an introduction to using and how to use these school loan devices. So meaning these students are introduced to their student emails with us. They learn how to log into their school Chromebooks, how to access other applications such as Google Classroom, Gmail, Zoom, Lexia, and another uh, other variety of tools and apps before they begin their journey with us at Highlands. So therefore our students gain the knowledge and the skills to help other students in their own native languages while practicing their customer service skills, English language speaking skills, collaboration skills, and they get a feel for what a real digital navigator work environment would be like. So the photo on the right is our very first student hire. Uh, her name is Anna, she's in the white jacket. She was part of our first group of students 
that fully completed our Community Digital Navigator CTE course and is our first, like I mentioned, student hire as a digital navigator at Highlands. So we have high hopes at, that this CTE course, um, so as this CTE course is gaining a lot of interest uh, for in-demand digital knowledge and skills. And we have high hopes that it will you know, continue to grow and that we'll be able to hire more of our own students as digital navigators. I would quickly add too that um, not only did she finish, did Anna finish the uh, program and, or the academic part and the internship hours, but she also um, graduated with her high school diploma in January. And so that, that was a big part of, of uh, being able to hire her as a digital an official digital navigator um, at Highlands. Thank you. So <clears throat> here's kind of a visual representation in a nutshell of what we talked about for today. So the Community Digital Navigator CTE course prepares our learners for the digital navigator role and in turn kind of creates an ongoing ecosystem of digital learning and support at Highlands. Our adult student population is continuously growing and the digital navigator is one of the innovative ideas that we've adopted to support such an unprecedented need for digital support and learning. So even though this type of role is new in the education space, we have high hopes that such a role will become a permanent part of our school culture at Highlands Community Charter School. And so a huge thank you to Jerry uh, for bringing this role and course to life as it has already changed the way we learn, we teach, and the way that we adapt here at Highlands to all of those unprecedented challenges. And I see a question in the chat. Are students reporting that there are positions available and that they are getting hired in real positions outside of Highlands? Oh uh, yeah, I can answer that. Not, not yet. I mean, we see this as an emerging market. Uh, like I was kind of speaking about, uh, our uh, regional like workforce coalition, They're, they are developing this, they see this as a huge opportunity. And so uh, they're developing a regional framework for this and hoping in the hopes that some of our major employers will develop this role and begin to hire. It's, it's on a fast track. Um, I, I think that we're uh, in a good position because we already have the program here that we're gonna be able to get ahead of it and kind of be at the head of the line uh, and be able to you know, kind of just hand off our students into these new roles. Uh, I'm really excited about that. This is uh, something that's happening right now. I was just on a, a meeting with that group, I believe in the middle of January or so. And so they're, they are uh, developing this in, uh, not only across industry, but they're working with our uh, local community college district as well as Sac State uh, to develop these roles. And so they could be really anywhere. Uh, they want to use, you know, they want to be able to, uh, for instance, introduce this role at Sac State and use undergrads in work study. Um, and so that might be a next step for some of our students. If they graduate and they want to go in, you know, go to transfer to Sac State. This would be perfect for them. I mean, they would be a shoe in for that type of position, right? Uh, Los Rios, which is one of the bigger community college districts in the state, they also are part of this coalition. They wanna introduce something like this across the, the Los Rios system, um, as well as you know CBOs like uh, uh, United Way is one of the big partners uh, the cap for the capital region um, and, and others. So, uh, and some of our local regional uh, CBOs. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're really excited. So no, we haven't seen placements yet, but the job, the job framework is almost ready. And, and I think that that next step is going to happen pretty soon. So that's a fantastic question. We have another question in the chat. Do you have 
I E L C E C T E courses. Could could uh, could we expand that? Um, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, I'm not familiar either. Would you mind sharing with us, uh, Leticia, uh, what that is referring to? Uh, Jerry, IELCE yeah. is um, where they um, they're WIOA funded agencies and they complete additional assessments um, as part of their uh, ESL program. And the IELCE, there are there's contextualized learning where you have a um, ESL teacher perhaps uh, in the same classroom as a CTE to assist there. So I assume that's what Letitia is talking about. Integrated mm. English, yes. Yeah, um, no, we don't have that. I know that we had, we had talked about something like that a few years back, um, but no, we don't have that specifically, um, at least not not in that language but um or with those with those initials but i um that's something definitely i'd, I'd love to look into sounds very interesting so that's the um yeah so that's the conclusion i i know we have a we have a little bit of time i wanted to leave a little bit of time for uh questions or any more questions or any comments or feedback for us. I mean, this is, uh, again, not only is the position new, but this course is new. Um, <clears throat> everything's evolving. Uh, we've seen just such a huge change from, uh, you know, just in the short time we've been operating uh, in this department, it's gone from uh, Chromebooks and hotspots to uh, to now we're, we're distributing uh, Samsung Galaxy smartphones. Uh, and so that changed the whole dynamic as well. Um, and, you know, all of the training that has to happen with that technology integration with the classrooms and the teachers, uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on. And there's a lot of potential for this to go in many different directions, I think. Um, and so one thing that I would emphasize is that Digital navigators do not look necessarily look this way at every agency. So just because we have it, um, ours look this way, it might not look the same if you were to do it at your school. And that's okay. It, it needs to fit your, you know, really student, you know, if we, we want to position the student experience first, at least that's my perspective. And so we need to think about who we're serving and then backwards map that. Right, and so when we talk about the, the language piece, that's huge. In other places, it's not a huge deal. You know, I've talked to some of these other agencies that were early on with introducing a digital navigator program, and they're like, oh yeah, we have a few Spanish speakers. And, you know, and, and I'm like, we have 2000 Farsi speakers, you know? <laughs> so like, it's a different dynamic depending on, you know, your, your location and, the size of your agency, the scope of your agency. A lot of these programs are being run by cities, uh, city libraries or uh, a digital inclusion initiative through the city, county or, or sometimes the state across the country. So uh, it really can be different and customized, which is great, it's flexible. Are there any other questions, maybe? Feel free to unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, first, I want to thank you uh, for presenting. Uh, this sounds like a wonderful program, um, and I'm stealing some of your ideas. Um, I did ask whether you had a, a measurement of digital literacy. You might have answered, and I'm sorry, I was uh, distracted somewhere else. And also, tell me a little bit more about your North Star Digital Literacy Program. What is that? Is that, is that the measurement you use? Yes. Uh, so since we had already previously, uh, our organization already had 
uh, access to North Star digital literacy. So we thought, why not use that as a basis to assess our students? And it's basically in the assessment, a very interactive uh, assessment in the computer between the students. And it also offers, after the student takes an initial, initial assessment, it actually offers lessons to help support um, the student in whatever the uh, program is assessing. And then the students get to take the assessment again afterwards. And so <clears throat> it's also a really great way to track their improvement. You can have you have access to all of that kind of data through North Star as well. That sounds wonderful. One more last question. Is this where you want to fund it? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on this. So <laughs> is are you asking if this this particular CTE pathway is WIOA funded? Correct. Uh, I believe so. Um, however, we do, you know, we, there's, uh, we, it's not necessarily, I, I, I couldn't answer that exactly, but we, we are a WIOA funded agency for sure, but I'm not sure how, what the allotment is for this particular program. Um, like I said, we had gotten some grant funding before, um, that's, you know, long gone, that was a long time ago, so I'm not sure how it's allocated now. Um, but uh, it's definitely it would definitely qualify if that was something I think that you wanted to do or if you wanted to try this out. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. And is that how you purchase your your laptops to loan to students? That I don't know the specifics on uh, about all of the funding. Thank you. But I can get back if you wanted if you wanted to uh, email me and get some more information. And, and for anybody, really, if you want some more information on this, because I know this was kind of a, what do they say, drinking from the fire hose or whatever, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here's my email and uh, also um, pretty active on Twitter as well, if you want to get to me on, on social media. Um, I would, Leticia, I would want to go back real quick to your question about North Star. And I know this is not about North Star, but we 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 have been using North Star for a long time. And we are what they call a sponsor site. And so <clears throat> North Star is a digital literacy assessment that used to be just an assessment, uh, kind of a standardized sort of assessment that you know different people could use individually or agencies could use. It's since grown a lot into uh, a curriculum that goes along with the assessments. Um, people can use it on their own, but sponsor sites can also proctor the exams or the assessments and issue cert uh, certificates that are like kind of signed by the, the agency and, a, uh, and the proctor uh, showing that they have demonstrated mastery of these skills. Now we are our own sponsor site, but I believe, and Susan jump in on this too, if you know, uh, agencies that are affiliated with OTAN can get access to the account and to the OTAN through OTAN to also be able to offer the curriculum and proctoring services, correct? I'm not sure about that. Um... You're talking about North Star, right? Yes, I know it used to be. You could, uh, yeah. I know that OTAN is a sponsor site, and I believe they were being able to give access to other uh, it, agencies. It is not listed on their website as a curriculum offer anymore. Uh, okay. So I, I can't speak to that, and there may be some way, you know, I would contact OTAN and at least mm -hmm. ask. It can't hurt. Yep, for sure. Um, otherwise, if you wanted, if, if that's no longer an option, it's very affordable. Um, I believe for uh, for any uh, agency that wants to become a sponsor site, uh, most will qualify for, I believe their annual fee for, for access to online curriculum and being able to proctor exams is like $500 for the year. And you can do unlimited cer certifications. So I hope that that helps a little bit, Leticia. And that is what we use as our baseline um, skills assessment so that we know where we need to uh, address 
gaps in the uh, in their knowledge. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm going to add one more question. So, is there? I hear there's a five hundred dollar um, annual fee. Is there a per student use, like Rosetta Stone, for example? No. No. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we also let any of our students, they don't have to be in the program to use North Star. Any of our students can use it. It's just a matter of setting up their account and they can get started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we've used it uh, over the years for many different uh, applications. Um, their curriculum is really nice uh, at the, you know, at the beginning, basic computer skills you can actually go in and print out uh, some of the, um, they've got like worksheets where they're just matching vocabulary with images. Um, and it really starts at the, at the baseline, like really like, what does a power button look like? What does a mouse look like? Stuff like that. So you, I mean, if you wanna talk about scaffolding, it's huge. Um, yeah. Lars, yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, just out of curiosity on the on the way that the the um, digital navigator is being used at your school, you say you have two digital navigators, and what what kind of a role do they have? Um, I, I, I guess during class, or or or, I'm assuming they're they're kind of functioning as a tutor, you know, like a one to one tutor kind of a thing to build digital skills for students? I mean, how does that, how does that really kind of mechanically work? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so let me give a little bit more context. On our agency, we are, um, we have about, I think right now, let's just safely say about 5,000 students enrolled. Um, and we have two main programs. We have a seat-based program and we have an independent study program. Um, and those are separate schools. Uh, our department serves, serves both programs, basically kind of a district level, if you, if you will. Uh, we have eight digital navigators at this point. Um, and so that's, you know, you look at the numbers right there, it's just, I mean, it, the ratio is really rough, right? So we're, we're looking to expand even more. Uh, we started with six, we're at eight now. Um, we've added some languages. I'd like to add some more. I'd love to, to add um, Mandarin. I'd love to add Arabic. I'd love to add Vietnamese um, just so that we can be able to serve all of our students or, or more of our students equitably. <clears throat> um, we mainly operate out of uh, what we call the digital learning lab at our main campus. And what we do here is uh, we do technology distribution. So we provide technology to students with an hands-on onboarding so that they know how to use the devices. They are connected to uh, their internet access. Uh, they know their, you know, they know their email, they know their logins, they uh, are connected with Clever so they can get onto all of their learning platforms, things like that. We, it's a really a concierge service. Most of that service happens here in the lab we have now uh, opened up student support centers at a lot of our sites. We have almost around 40 sites um, around the region and uh, some in other parts of the state. We are sending digital navigators out for uh, you know, four hour shifts so that they can help with just basic technology challenges. I mean, everything from resetting passwords to uh, you know, lockouts to uh, how to use any platform that they might be using, Google Classroom, Lexia, Learning Chart, whatever it is. Uh, they're just there to help them. So it is in a way tutoring, but it's really kind of technical supports, customer service. Um, and uh, again, that stuff really changes. Over, during the pandemic, when we were in remote learning, uh, the digital navigators were also providing some professional development opportunities when we weren't in person. Uh, so we were doing webinars every week uh, on topics like how to, you know, use some of the fe advanced features in Zoom, uh, introducing platforms like Wakelet, and uh, how to design uh, 
uh, for your Google Classroom and other things using Canvas uh, or Canva, how to use, um, uh, you know, how to design your Google Classroom, how to create a liquid syllabus, stuff like that. We've been, we have been doing that kind of work and it shifts all the time. We're pivoting all the time and, and kind of discovering and um, redefining and redefining what the role actually does all the time. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah mean, that's helpful. We, we, yeah, I, I would say that we're going to be perpetually understaffed, I think. Um, there's no way for us to get to a point where we would be able to, uh, I think, have enough digital navigators to uh, serve all of our sites all the time, full time, stuff like that. I mean, we really have to do kind of a scheduling balance and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's a great question. And uh, we're still figuring out, you know, um, this is always a work in progress. Yeah, I was just kind of asking the question, we have a couple of teachers right now that are doing that kind of a function where they are doing half day, um, um, three hour teaching session, say in the morning, and then in the evening, they're doing a three hour session of, of being a, 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 a tech, uh, tech assistant for for teachers and students and you know, similar to what your the the digital navigator is doing um so i'm just kind of curious how that obviously you've got a huge very large organization you've got five thousand students that's huge um uh we just had a couple of teachers that we put into that kind of a role uh, i was one of those for a while um i was just kind of curious how that how that balanced amazing yeah, well, so I, you know, I think the the solution for us was that uh, I kind of went top, sort of like top down, right? So a lot, a lot of agencies wanted to directly assist the students when when everything kind of uh, uh, shifted to remote learning. You know, oh, we have we have a huge gap in digital literacy. Let's address the students directly. Let's get them devices and all that. That's fantastic, but it's unsustainable in the long run, I think, if you only focus on the students and you don't focus on the staff and upskilling the staff to be able to be proficient in all of these areas. So one of the things that um, one of the things that we wanted to focus on was trying to provide a lot of training and hands on with the, with the staff so that that could trickle down eight Eight digital navigators for 5,000 students is one thing, which is really, really like, again, us unsustainable. But if we could get our teachers, you know, if we have over 100 teachers on board and at a baseline, now it's much more manageable for, for some of those tech issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can still provide that next level support. Um, and so what we wanted to do was take away a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, I would say tedious kind of smaller, ta you know, smaller stuff that was clogging up the teachers, you know, pipeline and take that out so that they can continue teaching. Um, and so, you know, what I would say is for your, you know, maybe for your agency, you might want to identify some students who are tech savvy and could help peer to peer you know, and, and they might be able to be employed by your agency for three hours a day or four hours. A higher day. level, a higher level ESL student who can, yep. who can do that. Yeah. And, and like you say, get the, get the tech burden away from the teacher. Exactly. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. And let the teacher teach, you know, uh, get the, you know, and, and get them also at the same time, you're upskilling the teachers, hopefully that they won't be bogged down by some of these, these tech issues that might jump up because, Oh yeah, I, I learned about that. That's you know, let me help you with that. Boom, done. Instead of oh, let me get back to you, or let me get a para. I need to help, or I need to go call IT or whatever. Um, that they might be able to be problem solvers at the same time. So, it's a. I think it's a balance, you know. Um, but having the digital navigators as a resource has been a game changer. Definitely. Uh, I think if you asked our staff now. They couldn't imagine a time when the digital navigators didn't exist. We also have another question in the chat. 
I am interested to know how much you pay your digital navigator. Ah, fantastic question. Our digital navigators, uh, that's a full-time position, full benefits, fully paid. It starts at $22.93 an hour. Um, and it goes up a, I think, seven point scale up to about almost 31. So about 23 to 31 between there. Uh, and I'm actually hiring for one right now. So it's on EdJoin, if you guys, <laughs> shameless <laughs> plug. If you know anybody in the Sacramento region who speaks Farsi, Dari, or Pashto, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I have an opening and it's, it's open on EdJoin. And uh, I don't know if I can get the, maybe Hannah can put the job posting in the, um, thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking that question. I think it's really important to disclose what we are paying and what the what the uh, terms of the job are. It's really good. 